Record. Okay, recording in progress. And now I will let all these people in who are uh, on here. Hold on a second. Let me uh, let me go to participants. Oh wow, a ton of people. Oh boy. Well, I'm, I'm glad you all all waited through that uh, little problem we were having. Uh, hello to, oh, hello to Mandy, and hello to Marjorie, and hello to Steve, and hello to Andrew, you're here today, and uh, Rick Sheckman is coming in in a moment, uh, we got Edward Berger, that's right, we got Scott Boddicker, we got Charlie Wallace, we got Len LaFrisco, hey, you're home, Len, hey, Mandy, you're home, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, the two of you were in, uh, Cabo, what, what, why'd you why'd you give the thumbs down there, Mandy? Bet you. you I'm not still in Cabo. Because <laughs> <laughs> the vacation's over. Right. I I've never been to Cabo. Uh, uh, what is it like? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, in you know, five miles inland, it's a desert, but yeah. along the coast, it's absolutely freaking gorgeous. Wow! <laughs> wow! Cool. They still have practices and stuff as landscaping, yeah. just because the 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 plural is actually cacti. Cacti. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I just have to say before we get started how absolutely incredible it was to meet you, Mandy, and you're so charming in person, and you were delightful, and I had such a great time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're so fun it was so fun to talk to you and get to know you well the rest of us are pieces of shit <laughs> <laughs> oh boy hello well anyway hello also to steve bender andrew deutsch edward berger scott bodiker and i already say this charlie wallace len the frisco and the ever popular uh rick sheckman hello there rick uh, i'm here too yeah, <laughs> I, I said Marjorie, didn't I say Marjorie? Oh, well, I guess there, did. Was a, I, there was a reason for that. Anyway, <laughs> no, hello, Marjorie. Hi. Hi. Uh, and uh, um, uh, hello to all of you. Uh, what's happening? Anybody having anything interesting outside of those I two? I had a birthday last week. You had a birthday last week. Yeah. How old are you, Charlie? Not me, Rick. Oh, Rick. Yeah, yeah, oh, Alex. Remember the date. <laughs> Actually, here I felt terrible. Okay, um, no reason to. No, no reason I to feel terrible. Huh? I wished him a happy birthday. Yes, you I did, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought it was the third of December, and I guess the reason I thought it was the third of December is Marjorie's birthday is the third of November, and I guess I just kept th three in my mind. And I had it on my calendar, but I didn't see it. So I had to, I wished him a happy birthday on the third. And he said, that was two days ago. And I'm sitting here feeling like a pack of poop, you know? No big deal. Because this is the guy I consider my best friend and I forget his birthday. So I what? I didn't forget it. I was quite aware of it. And I was ready to pounce on it. And that's exactly what I did, but two days late. So, yeah, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> anybody else having a birthday anytime soon? Oh, okay, I'm having I'm having one one day this year. I think. <laughs> well, having Alex one is day having one in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having one in two. I weeks. have to check. I have to check. Yeah, I think I get one this year. Well, actually, it's not two weeks. It's uh, it's ten days, I believe. Well, okay, a week and a half. Well, no, 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 it is 12 days, 12 days. So it's you're close. Two weeks. I don't care. It's the 12 days of Alex. The 12 yeah. days of Alex. Oh, boy. You know, I Marjorie was talking with her friend, Natalia, and they were talking about, what do you call it? Uh, things that you do that you, you have to do because otherwise there's a curse behind them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's that called? It's um, my mind's a blank here. My mind's a blank too. Yeah. Um, but it, it's superstitions. Superstition, it. right? Yeah. And, and what were a couple that you mentioned? Something like she mentioned. Um, I, I had the champagne bottle on the kitchen shelf, 
she said, don't do that. That means someone's going to die. And she made me take it to the garbage. But I remember one is you never leave an umbrella open in right. your apartment unless right. it's drying out. Yeah, no, that's a famous one. That's a famous right, but, but she says, no, it's got to be closed inside. I said, no, not when it's drying out. Actually, the, the curse is actually that never open a umbrella yes, indoors. Yes, that's her umbrella. Right, but that's before out. you go out. Yeah. See, so you shouldn't open it in your house. Mm -hmm. No, or you leave you it outside the apartment it open door. If it's drying out oh, after a storm. That's that's another way. Put it outside the door, and here in my apartment house, it'll be stolen. Yeah. <laughs> you want to you want to you want to hear a really weird personal one? Yes. Since, since you're talking about birthdays, and I, I'll try and make this quick. But tomorrow's December seventh. Okay, my dad died on December seventh. His grand, his father, and his grandfather and his uncle all died on December seventh. Wow. My, dad, my dad's entire life, he talked about how he was going to die on December 7th. And we oh. always said, just shut up, stop it, enough already. To the point where he had booked a flight to England with my mom on December 7th, and she refused to fly with him. He had to change. <laughs> oh, my God. But get, but get this, it gets weirder. So he gets really sick. He was, you know, he was old. And, and he's in hospice. Yeah. And we're sitting there in the hospice on December, on, uh, December 7th. Yeah. And um, I talked to the nurse and they said, no, it's going to be a few more days. You can go home. So we come home and we say, well, at least he didn't die on December 7th. Five you minutes to 12. Off. Five minutes to 12. The phone. No. Ring. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. The, And the weirdest part of the whole story is two months later, I go to my mom's house and she's like, do you want your dad's watch? And I'm like, no, I don't wear a watch. I don't want it. She says, here, just take it. And I look at the watch and I swear to God, Alex, he hadn't touched his watch. He didn't take it to hospice. It was stopped at 5 to 12 huh. with the date exactly where it should have been on December 7th. Wow. Oh, shit. Wow. It's so strange. Wow. I don't believe any of this shit, but that's uncanny, right? How, yeah. are, you, how are you feeling, Steve? How are you feelling? <laughs> You're well, right. you know, everyone calls me. All my friends, I, my mom already called me. Don't go swimming tomorrow. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> So we shall see. I mean, wow. uh, boy, yeah, it, that's that's weird. And isn't it? Isn't December seventh Pearl Harbor Day too? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I kind of want to die day. on December seventh. Not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Not tomorrow. But you know, twenty years from now, fine. Yeah. Well, Stay inside tomorrow. Well, yeah. I just. I just called my bookie, Steve. He says you got a one in three sixty five chance of that happening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, uh, Steve, oh. don't come on the show next week for five minutes, Steve. <laughs> the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, that's. I, I don't know if I believe in that stuff, but that's bizarre. Right, I don't believe in it, but it's just bizarre. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had I had a, a a similar situation. I was being haunted by the ghost of my Thanksgiving turkey, and uh, <laughs> my my wife told me it was a poultry geist. Oh, oh man, oh. you're, be oh, you're better. Sorry. You're better than that, Andrew. <laughs> I, I apologize. I'll go back on mute. <laughs> we we just lost one of our four viewers. I looked at the <laughs> okay. viewers watching this. That guy you was know, a turkey. By the way, don't feel bad about that doesn't matter how many people are watching now over a week i got a lot of people for last week's show i mean incredible how, amount of people how many huh well uh, between, between all the different places we posted over 400 watched it wow yeah hmm. you know which of course compared to any other major po uh, podcast is diddly you know who cares yeah, who cares? Yeah, we have, we have fun. Well, we have fun, and I hope the people yeah. who watch it also have fun as well. But they seem to really, it keeps the audience keeps growing every week. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that this is the one place you can come to. This show is the one place you can come to, and it's just nice. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're not the Ted sitting... Lasso of shows, huh? What? We're the Ted Lasso of get togethers. <laughs> well. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't watch Ted Lasso. Me neither. It's too nice. <laughs> I didn't even get through the first episode. I, I made it through two and a half, and that was it. We tried the first. Remember, Alice? We turned yeah. it off. I just, uh, it's just kind of like, eh, you know. Yeah. And everybody's saying how wonderful Ted Lasso is. <laughs> 
Man, I can't figure it out because it doesn't uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't do it. Doesn't nope. do it. So. Nope. Mm. But anyway, so I um, let's see here. What else? I just got a new computer. Got a Mac Mini. I wanted to try it because they have the M1 chip in it, but it has very little memory in it. So I got to put everything off onto a hard drive when yeah. I run stuff. But it looks to be pretty fast and peppy. And uh, so anyway, that's 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 all I've done this week that was interesting <laughs> and exciting. Well, I got two new tires. Oh, did you? <laughs> and I can come out this weekend. Yes, I picked up the car this morning. Because you can pick me up at the... Yes. Now, mind you, tell them how old your car is. It's a 1995 Toyota Camry. Okay, so that makes it... 25 years. 26. 20, yeah, 26. 26 years. Um, and it's still... And how many miles do you have on it? Ready for this? Probably 60,000. <laughs> so what you're trying to say is the two new tires are worth more than the entire car. <laughs> only a little old lady has driven it that's correct yeah. and, the, the and problem you put the put the what? two new tires and the insurance goes up because now it's worth more well yeah he had, had to put two new tires on the front because one went out and so you don't want one bolder than the right they want to balance it so you have to buy two tires doesn't matter for the back tires right it, it does i don't know it does but, that's front wheel drive, so you really want the front ones to be matched. So yeah. 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 You you want you want to have the front somewhere match and the rears match. And you, you need to tread on the rear in the snow, it fishtails all the time because it needs traction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Where oh where is Scott? Oh, there's Scott. I, I keep I, this <laughs> when there are this many people, I have to look and see who's here and who isn't here. Um, Scott, how's everything in Texas? Just wonderful. We love our governor. <laughs> <laughs> both uh charlie and scott are in texas yeah uh and uh or deep in the part of texas pray for us huh <laughs> <laughs> well i you know Department I of Justice today issued a um uh uh i guess a uh whatever it is <laughs> i can't think were, were you gonna mention um, something political here yeah. Oh, no, no, text. don't do it. Don't do it. Let's have okay. a perfect record. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's have a perfect record on this show. Well, you mentioned Texas, Alex. No, I mentioned Texas. Well, uh, well, you asked how things are in Texas. That's I got to tell you, until I, there you go. until I moved to New York, my favorite city that I ever lived in, outside of San Francisco, which is my home as well, uh, was Houston. I loved Houston. I, it was, at least at that time, I don't know now, it was a great town. And it was still kind of really Texas, you know, you had the beer lounges. They still have the beer lounges there? As far as I know. It, see, Scott just went, what? Beer, <laughs> beer lounges? Yeah, beer lounges. Bar? What? Oh, 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 yeah. I know. Like, a, like, a, like, a, like a dance hall or what? Yeah, like a dance. A honky, like a dance a honky tonk. A honky tonk. A honky tonk. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Mechanical bowl. <laughs> yeah, but they had these beer lounges and they had a certain atmosphere to them that was really yeah. pure Texas. Am I right, Charlie? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And they serve, serve what? I know, I even know the three beers they serve Lone Star, Jacks, and Pearl. Yeah. Now, now, which are those all still in business? I've never heard of Jack, so I don't know. <laughs> Lone Star and Pearl are, yeah. Yeah, Jacks was J A X. Yeah, and then if you wanted to get hard liquor, you had to go to a private club. Yeah, and what that was was a way of keeping Charlie Wallace from coming in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you would go in, and you didn't have to be a member. But the waitress would then sign a membership card for you, Jeez. and then you could order boot. You could order yeah. liquor, hard liquor. Uh, it it was a very, very strange state. It was a liquor. What was it? what was the liquor laws there? Blue, uh, blue laws. Well, blue they were blue laws. laws. Yeah, uh, it, I don't think it's that way anymore, right, Charlie and Scott? Nope. No. Yeah. You can when just, I lived, in, I lived in Baton Rouge for a while, and back that was the early '80s, and. You couldn't buy alcohol on Sundays. 
or after <laughs> 10 o'clock at night or something. Same well, here. New York City. Yeah, so same here. New York City. Until 12 o'clock on yeah. Sunday. Really? Yeah. Well, here's it's me. So you still can't buy liquor until noon on Sunday. Right. Hey. Wow. You can buy you remember here at Target any time of the day or night. It doesn't yeah. matter. Do you remember when when the smoking laws and no smoking laws went into place in Minnesota? They had an exception for smoking indoors if it was a theatrical production. Mm. So bars called themselves theaters, and people would sign up to be a cast member oh. so that they can smoke. <laughs> and they that was how they got around the law was that it was it was a performance art, and you were signing up to be a cast member of of the yeah. bar play. Yeah, oh, and people cool. could smoke in the bar. Cool. Hmm. Is it? It's what you'd call off Broadway. <laughs> that's what you'd call creative solutions to stupid problems yeah yeah what's what's it like down in uh, uh georgia mandy do you have any blue laws regarding liquor down there um we did up until pretty recently just a couple of years no none on sunday none and then on they sunday. Yeah. yeah here we uh, let me see here bars close down at four in the morning in new york wow and I, when do they open back up? Like five. <laughs> you're almost right. You're almost, <laughs> I don't know. Almost right. Or four oh seven. Clean the bathroom sometime. <laughs> it was like it was like uh, what ten o'clock at night or something. Like, is it ten o'clock in the morning or? No, I think it was early because I know at NBC all the technicians like on the Today Show would be in Hurley's like at eight fifteen in the morning. <laughs> Oh, okay, so maybe eight o'clock. So they yeah. close down at four and they reopen at eight. How stupid is that? Yeah. Why do they well, do again, why do we have no liquor until noon? Church. Church. That's yeah. exactly right. Shane. Yeah, I like this is really a church going city, man. <laughs> no, but the women's league was very instrumental in uh, outlawing alcohol. Well, the 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 women's the temperance league. league. Temperance league. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was you babes that got us so we couldn't drink anymore. <laughs> well, I always thought that was kind of, you know, pro prohibition did have an advantage. We were such a drinking nation that, for instance, people would have, if you down south, if you went to their house, outside the door was a huge barrel of hard cider. And you could take but that's also because the water was not potable in many yeah. areas in the country. So that's why people drank beer. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that makes sense. But, yeah. the point, but the point is that uh, w this was a nation in which uh, I think the consumption was just something like 80% of the population. But it was beer. It wasn't hard liquor, more or less. Maybe it was, you know. It was beer. It was definitely beer. But when they, you know, when they came back out of the other end of prohibition there wasn't as much drinking as there was going into it you know unless you're wealthy well no yeah. no but you didn't pick up where you left off let me put it that way and i don't think we've ever been as yeah but we were also in a depression when the temper you know when prohibition ended that people couldn't afford liquor are you making excuses for why prohibition might have worked on some level <laughs> Hey, it made a lot of people a lot of money. Yeah, well, that was they the other problem. It made Joe Kennedy a lot of money. It was, <laughs> it was a good example of why you don't make things illegal, <laughs> you know, because somehow uh, creative minds will prevail, like the ones who are running plays in where Minnesota or whatever. <laughs> because of no smoking except in theater. Why not? Why except in theaters? What's the thinking on so that? The one? actors in a stage. theatrical profession. Oh, the, actors the actors are allowed stage. to smoke. Oh, An okay. actor who has a scene with a cigarette can smoke a cigarette. So everybody then signs this thing, and they're all part right. of the play. All you're part. not a you're not a participant. You're not a, a customer. You're a, a cast member at the bar. Well, at what, the, what if somebody the, just walks in and says, "I'm here for the show"? <laughs> they, they, buy a, they buy a, they buy a ticket. Yeah. They buy a ticket and then they get lung cancer treatment about three years later. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. It gets you a 10% off coupon at the hospital in your first, your first lung scan. Any other superstitions that people have? See, sometimes I have well, them. they were just things that have been passed down that you hear them as you're growing up. Well, my, oh, my mother had a few, a few that she in, enforced on me as I was growing up. And that is 
if you walk uh, around a pole and somebody walks around the other side of the pole, you have to say bread and butter. <laughs> Why? You know that, Cindy. I thought I was the only one that did that when I was a kid. Bread and butter. <laughs> yeah. Me yeah. and my little friends used to do that. We'd yeah. say that or salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. And you went one went around one part of the pole, one went around the other yeah. side of the pole, bread and butter. And of course, you couldn't step on a crack. Yeah. Well, you, you break your mother's back. Rubber. In fact, I stepped on a crack one day and I came home and suspiciously <laughs> enough, my mother had broken her back. It was amazing. <laughs> it's all your fault. Hmm? Was it December 7th? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever um, carry a rabbit's foot? <laughs> no. I knew a rabbit that did. Yeah. Four yeah. Of them. yeah. Four of them. Uh, uh, and those rabbits aren't that lucky either. You know? <laughs> um, uh, but um, yeah, I just, uh, there, there, were, there were those little things. And then I have, I have one superstition now that if I feel I'm something, I'm, I'm putting a cane of hurrah on something, which is a Jewish <laughs> expression for, I guess, tempting God. Right. You know, you, you might it, you curse. Like you might curse it if you. If right. You don't want to do it on your good fortune. I will. I, I am. Marjorie's probably never noticed this. I will tap my leg ten times. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you ever and notice that? Right. Why mm -hmm. not just knock on wood once? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I could knock on wood. Of course, then I try to what? knock on wood here. What is but this... it that you do that causes the 10 times? Well, I, I just use it. I, it's, I, it could be any one of a number of things. Um, I, I won't go into when I, when I do it, but uh, I, I have been known to do it when I, when I wanted something to happen. You know, I like it's... tap my leg 10 times. I, I heard if you tap, tap it... your leg. I heard if you tap it 10 times, you're playing with it. <laughs> when, when I was in junior high school, I got my period. I told my mother and she slapped me. And that was a sign of good luck in Jewish. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I'd hate to win a poker. Why are you slapping me? I'd hate yeah. to win a poker at the Benet Brith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So uh, how many of you are over the age of 65 right now and eligible for Medicare? Medicare, 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 Medicare. Are you tired of watching all these ads on TV? Well, it'll end tomorrow. Yes, it, it ends, ends tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow it's all over with. And all the junk mail you get every day. Well, I, I get junk mail from the people I buy insurance from. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, the, the thing, oh, you got to do it by October 7th. Actually, do you have to do it by October 7th or do you have to just have to pay a penalty or something after October 7th? December 7th. December 7th, rather. Excuse me. Why did I say October? Unless uh, you're coming in as a new patient. Well, unless you're coming in as a new patient. You can't, you can't change until those opening periods. Uh, unless I, you're a new patient. I, 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 I seem to recall our insurance guy saying you can, but you have to pay a penalty or something to do it. And why is that period? Why is it a period of time? Probably so we'll only have these insurance ads on TV for a month or two. You know. Uh, I think it's so that the insurance companies have guaranteed income for a year. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yes, yeah. because people don't want to leave their insurance company during the year because they'll be off the rolls. They can't get back. It can't hop back on. Yeah. 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 So, so to Steve, you think your dad made his plan so he wouldn't have to pay another year's premiums? <laughs> <December 7th? laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I've got it. I turned 65 the first week of January, so I got to sign up for this shit. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's good. You'll like it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still on, my wife's still, my wife's now. still working, right? So I'm on her insurance. So I only need to sign up for Part A, I think, right now. While well, I'm you still can have that Social Security. I think you have to be 67 now. I no, think 65. Yeah. You have to sign up for Medicare. Medicare. I think if you want to have, uh, it, it depends on the company, but I think if if you're if she has insurance, okay, 
and you want to get just get Medicare, the supplemental they will take care of. Mm-hmm. You can get the supplemental through her work. I, I don't, but I don't know about that. Right. No, I think- when I was working, Marjorie, uh, I had us both, we were both on Medicare and I had us, oh, I know what it was. Well, my if, if your company, supplemental, wait, Alex. Wait, wait a minute, if your company has more than 20 employees, right? okay, yeah. which she probably does, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And you want insurance through her, you can yeah. get it through her and Medicare will take care of the other 20%. Right. Okay, right. we'll take care of 20%. Of it. And then when she no longer is working, you can both go on Medicare. They take right. care then of 80%, you get the percent and then you got to get, get the supplemental. Yeah, then you get the supplements. Yeah. I become an expert on this, boy. Well, yeah, I may, I may be calling you. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I mean, uh, but get it because it will take care oh, of the other part of your, what, what your regular insurance doesn't yeah, take. No, care. I'll definitely get it. Whatever, you know. And Edward Berger, you. That's raised- right. I'm officially on Medicare. You're officially on Medicare. <laughs> yeah. Now you're going to do something about that voice? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see. I'll see. I'll see if they can give me a new voice. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to uh, Will Durst, uh, who's a comedian who uh, had a stroke. Okay. Not pretty, not wonderful. And he is no longer being covered by Medicare for an orthotic for his ankle which he needs he needs in order to be able to to he he's lost his uh, left leg i think it is and he's trying to get it working again but the ankle needs to be braced in order for him to walk it's a whole thing anyway what i was told by his wife was he has to get a new orthotic because somehow it has changed and they've got to create a new orthotic for him and Medicare won't pay for it because they'll only pay for one orthotic every four years. Every year. Huh? Every year they'll give you a new orthotic. No, not an orthotic. Not, not this kind. I wear them. I, I, maybe I'm using the wrong term. It's a brace of some sort that goes on the ankle and they say that- Orthotics will change every year. No, the, the, well, this is, maybe this isn't an orthotic, okay? Okay. Maybe, but this is a brace of some sort that goes on the ankle, Okay. And, uh, and and he has to wait until 2025 to get another one. Oh, or pay for it himself. Now, luckily, they did a GoFundMe, and they're up to $226,000. Um, in fact, I'm thinking of calling uh, Durst's wife and seeing if I can get some money from them to take care of our lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, two hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars. So they're going to going to pay for this this brace or whatever it is out of that. But it's terrible. I mean, the government should just say to you, and this isn't politics. This is just being nice, nice. the The government should say to you, "They're there. You've been a good citizen. You paid your taxes every year. Now it's our time to take care of you." You know, that's the and way not, it should be. Yeah, and not throwing these. Oh. Uh, we can only give you a new brace every four years. Well, maybe in the normal case of things, you need a new brace every year because it, you're the, the 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 ankle changes or whatever. But I just well, look what happened to me last spring. I reached the donut hole. And well, she the, had, she fell into the donut hole. Into the, the donut of- hole. <laughs> Why the hell is there even a donut hole? <laughs> Well, the donut hole is when and we need a donut things hole things. so we can get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, she no, she fell in the donut hole and she didn't realize that the donut hole is entered by you. You you get a drug. OK, the uh, Medicare pays a certain amount of it. So you would figure the donut hole went towards to what they paid. But no, it's what the drug is listed at. So she had one drug. What was it? It was something. Well, I get a prolio shot for bone. I have bone issues. And I get it twice a year. It's $300. So do I. Shot. That went up to $3,000 a shot. So really, after a couple of those shots. Or maybe well, before one, I reached the donut hole, I paid the 300 You paid the but, 300 
But the, how what much my did... doctor did to get around it, and I thought it was brilliant, instead of using it as an RX, I went in as a cancer patient to the infusion center at Mount Sinai, and they treated <laughs> me as a medical condition. I got my shot there. But you see, you shouldn't have to go through any of this. That's right. But well, a anyway, medical rather what than... What I'm pre- saying is, is that they took care of... There was one thing you were taking that was incredible. The price was incredible on it. And a couple of months of that, she falls into the donut hole. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's just that whole that whole situation is just horrible, ghastly. And then what they don't tell you, they tell the people on the air, hey, you know, you could get Medicare Advantage and you'll also get some dental and you'll get some vision. And, uh, you know, it, it takes care of uh, the, what they don't tell you. What they don't tell you is you lose your Medicare. Yeah. For life. Is it for life? Yeah. Oh, you really? You can't say next year. You I can't don't go want back. It. You can't go back. I believe. Oh, wow. No. I did that. That part I didn't know. Isn't that? I, are you that sure about either. that? I, I think you can change. You can if you can say I want to get off. Back. I don't think you can go you back. Can't, you can't say I don't want the advantage anymore, and they say, okay, well, you're back on Medicare. I think you can, because I've been reading all the shit about Medicare because I'm plan- going on. Well, maybe they maybe that. they changed the law, but but I'm I was pretty much sure that I heard that once, but. Yeah, when that, when that went on, you you couldn't go back. Oh, really? Years ago, so. You went on advantage. Yeah. Are you still on it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I got it through the state. I had no choice. The state put me on it. On but advantage. That's my, that's my healthcare was with the state, so they moved me over to this Medicare Advantage. I mean, I can't complain. I don't pay anything. Everything was yeah. 100 covered, so I can't. Wow. Well, that, that must be because you're on a state plan. Yeah, you know, you're on some sl- state Medicaid or something like that. Yeah. yeah, but it sounds like a good plan. Yeah, that's what I took that hit on my pay for 25 years was so I would get these great benefits when I retired. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good, especially that's because you had some real problems. You had diabetes. And, yeah, you know. Things like that. I had those toe surgeries and didn't have to pay a nickel. Yeah. Why is it the toes go with diabetes? Peripheral, the farthest away from the heart, the the least circulation. Oh, okay. All right. Because that's where I've got my neuropathy. Yeah. 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 Isn't it wonderful getting old? Boy, we need we need younger this. people on the show. This is turning into an AARP meeting. The youngest, well, I believe the youngest person here is Mandy. I think so. And you're over 50, right, Mandy? 55. I think, 55. I think, I think we're about a month apart. Really? Yeah. Mandy and I. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you were 66, right, Mandy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is there anybody who's young out there we have the the the, the address on here of uh, where you click to go talk to us right on that says senior citizens alex and no one wants to push <laughs> so, that no no i would like to see if we could get a real young person to call the show they're all they're all working <laughs> i only <laughs> i only come on this show to try to sell home oxygen alex <laughs> I only joined the show because I'm now selling home oxygen systems for the elderly. I'm trying to are get some you, customers. Are you? Are you no, no, no. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's why I go to buffets to see what the latest technology is in home oxygen systems. <laughs> see fried chicken and uh, and oxygen tanks with yeah. masks. <laughs> oh, anyway, so Shecky. Uh, uh, have you watched anything interesting lately that you might want to impart to us? Not really, though there's supposedly a very good Charlie Chaplin documentary on Saturday night on Showtime. Oh, really? Yeah, I've, I've heard good things about that. It's, yeah. it's supposed to be called great. the real Charlie Chaplin, I yeah. believe. It's I called. don't know that, you know, like I think of American Experience, for instance, which I watch, or uh, or American Masters. I don't think they've ever done a thing on Charlie Chaplin. Well, he's not American. Yeah, he's not American. Yes. Oh, but he did it in America. I mean, you got to consider Charlie Chaplin an American phenomenon. You know, he didn't go to Europe, make a bunch of movies, and then come over here. Yeah, but then you need some person who wants to make that documentary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, somebody made it, obviously. It's going to be. Yeah, but Showtime. they made it for Showtime. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward it, to that. Have you been watching this season of Curb Your Enthusiasm? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> really funny. Yeah, it's really funny. The only problem I have with it is I can always figure out how he's going to fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's getting very predictable that way. But the the Klansman episode. That way. The Klansman was a great. The Klansman was that, a great. Yes. Movie. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Was, yes. That was freaking hysterical. <laughs> that was when, good. when I laugh out loud and I'm home alone doing it, it's got to be funny. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, it's very. It was very funny. I didn't watch last night's though, so don't don't spoil it for us. But Scott Richard Lewis in his only appearance of the season looking not good. Man. Well, Ooh, yeah. Lewis hasn't looked good for years now. No, but this is this yeah. is worse. This is worse. Yeah. Yeah, it's but to I, ruin the episode, but Larry says some stupid stuff. Maybe that, he uh, maybe he's <laughs> just, maybe Lewis is just getting old. Wait a minute, hold no, on. No, he looks well, they're like exactly the same age. Echo, how old is Richard Lewis? Richard Lewis is 74 years old. Hold on. Oh, I mean, he's exactly the same age as Larry David, right? They were in the hospital. Well, the he's same Letterman's time. age. They were all that same yeah. from that same group. What do you mean they were in the hospital at the same? They time? were in the same uh, maternity, uh, you know, the, oh, you maternity, paternity, paternity. Uh, 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 wherever the babies are. Yeah, maternity. In the same hospital? I believe so. Wow. wow. Same birth, same birthday? I don't know. I mean, I have friends, but I don't know. This so here was December seventh. Room with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but don't forget, Rick, Richard had some problems over the years. Oh, oh yeah. What kind of problems? Road hard, hung up with drugs and stuff drugs. like that. Drugs, yeah. depression. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always like Richard. Nice guy. Nice, decent guy. Uh, but. Um, uh, only once this year on Curb. Yeah, it's only in one episode. And then they got Vince Vaughn playing, what's his name? Funkhauser. Yeah, Funkhauser, who was played by Albert Brooks's brother. So right, you, yeah. Who would have awesome. thought they would have brought in Albert Brooks to play that part? <laughs> well, maybe Albert doesn't want to do it. He's not the most... Right, they had Albert Brooks. On the, Albert Brooks was on the first episode of the season. He was, yes. Okay. And he, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't playing Funkhauser's But he wasn't brother. a Funkhauser. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. So you know what was weird? Letterman hosted the Kennedy Center last night. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, really? Yeah, I have no idea why, but he did. The Kennedy Center Honors. Yeah, yeah. Did he shave? I doubt it. Well, you know, was there someone? Was there someone that was honored that that Letterman has an might attachment have been to? Lauren Michaels. Yeah, Lauren oh, there you Michaels. go. There you go. That makes sense. Was it broadcast? Uh, the end of December. They honored Lauren Michaels. Lauren Michaels. Yes. Joni, for Joni what? Mitchell, for Joni what? Mitchell, <laughs> Boy, Lauren Michaels, Joni Mitchell, another one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you get old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, you know, they, they do say that uh, there's an old saying that uh, with age, uh, even uh, uh, whores get respect. <laughs> and, and it's true. You know, all of a sudden you go from being a whore to being mom. To being yeah, it's like, and I've known, I really know nothing that, that much about him. Barry Gordy was one of the honorees last night. Oh, really? Hmm. Did he bring any of the mobsters with him that got him to where he is today? Yeah, but that's what I mean. Yeah, you know when you run out of people to uh, quote honor. Well, boy, you know, I mean, I just think, uh, who would I honor? Anybody got any ideas who hasn't been honored who should be? I think uh, Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Oh, yeah. good one. Good one. Better yeah, absolutely. Get him, better get it fast. But Mel Brooks might not want to travel to Washington. You know, again. There are people who, you know, they get the phone call and go like, nah, I'm not interested. Mm. Mm. What was the old story I heard about somebody who got a call from some organization and said, by the way, you've been main, named man of the year. And he said, oh, he says in our um, our award ceremony and blah, 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 blah. blah. And um, he said, well, I can't be there. And they immediately came back with, do you know anybody else who would want the award? Well, that used to be the Golden Globes back in the 60s, if you remember. 
Yeah, if you can if show, up, show you up, they went to the number two. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes. You know, Pia Zadora. Mm. Pia Zadora. Yeah, yeah Pia Zadora. Yeah. Wow. Oh, God. Yeah. But um, so, was it? Didn't what? Pia Zadora, can she actually really kind of sing and dance? She, she could sing very well. Yeah. Yeah. He was in Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, yeah, yes, when she was a kid. As a kid, yes, as a child. But I went and uh, I, I had heard that she was a great singer, you know. And so I went into uh, a record store, a big record store. What was it? What was the big one on Gallup? Tower. 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 Yeah. Tower. And, and uh, down near my neighborhood. And I went in and I, I went up to one of these people behind the counter uh who you kind of have to always tell them that they're not in music they're just selling <laughs> and and uh i said um where do you have the piazadora album and they looked at me and they went <laughs> you want an album by piazadora <laughs> and i said yes i want an album by piazadora and they finally looked they couldn't figure out where it was. They didn't know where it was. Where? <laughs> and finally, they they found it, and it was there were a whole bunch of them there because they knew they were going to sell, and and they gave it to me. And I felt I felt like I had just gone into like to buy my first condom when I was a kid. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, Piazza, yeah, Piazzadora. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife and I felt a little bit like that a couple of weeks ago. We went to IHOP for dinner you know like for breakfast for dinner yeah and we're looking at each other going did, did we like just give up because don't you have to be like a hundred to get into ihop for dinner <laughs> and, you know it just it felt wrong i felt like i gave up <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean it's t uh, uh, did you go at four o'clock yeah <laughs> you know <what? laughs> i'm gonna take the fifth on that man <laughs> yeah. ihop closes at seven yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, Shecky's going on a cruise in a couple of weeks. Nice. Yes, two weeks from today, I fly down to West Palm, and then I get on the ship on the Thursday of that week. Be yeah. prepared to fill out a lot of freaking paperwork to travel internationally. It is absolutely unbelievable. Well, I do have my boarding pass, but I'm sure that's not going to do me much good once I get there. No, you've got no. to have the passports and the health attestations. Yeah, well, you know. When I get there, I'm staying with my cousin for three days. Uh, they have someone coming to his house who's going to do the swabbing. Beautiful. Wasn't another cruise ship just hit by a lot of COVID? I just read this today. Yeah, one of the Norwegian yeah. cruise lines. Yeah, I just read it today. I, was, I thought it made oh, me think uh, of you. Be careful. Well, when you but, then, but then, by the way, so they had COVID. They didn't tell anyone. And then that night, they sailed back out again. Really? Oh, boy. Mandy mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, and um, uh, Lynn, uh, on your trip to Cabo, how much paperwork did you have to go through to get down? <laughs> to get getting down was easy, uh, not much to do at all. But coming back, health attestation, swabbing, test within seventy two hours. It's now down to twenty four hours. Um, passport, of course. Um, what else, Mandy? Did I miss you? Um. You had like the forms you had to fill out on the plane when to go yeah. in the immigration. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah, then you got to do your declaration. Well, you always had to do immigration. Yeah, like, just going into a country. And the ship does free swabbing. Yeah, our our resort did free swabbing as well. So yeah. while you swab the deck, swabbing the deck, or you're not. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah. Walk the plank. Thank if COVID. You. So, so coming back was worse than going. Going, you just had to fill out some immigration papers. Hello, yeah. welcome to Cabo. Yeah, coming they, back, you had to like not only fill out papers, but you had to take a swab and you had to do everything. Do you have to take a swab before you went down there? No, no. But I do to you get on the boat. Wait a minute, you did, Mandy? And I had to do it for the resort, I think, that oh, I stayed at. Sure. Okay, so you had to take it. You had to take it here. Yeah, I had to do it at home and take a picture of the results. And then have it. proof that you did it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the ship that I'm going on has to be 100% vaccinated, yeah. crew and passengers. So that's why I have to have the test before I can get onto, quote, the boat. 
Yeah. Didn't they just do something here in New York where they said everybody has to have? Yeah, the guy is going to be out of office in three weeks. <laughs> you know, I, I was never I was never a lover of his, but I'll tell you something for COVID, he did a great job for the city. It's like 90%. Yeah. And you can't. Yeah, except for the transit workers and the cops and the firemen and the people with the phony vaccine cards and, you know, come on. Yeah. Well, it's better than most of these. What I'm saying is, what was a law they passed today? It came across my watch. That pri all private industry has to be vaccinated in New York City. Oh, wow. wow. In New York City. Okay, that, that's good. I mean, what's the big fucking But, but this deal? is him, not to get, again, getting political. He's positioning himself for that phony run for governor. But isn't it interesting that all the people that are running for governor are the people who sold Cuomo up the creek? Yeah. Uh, the attorney general. Well, why do you think he, they sold him up the creek? Yeah. Well, here we go. We're getting term. into politics. This is not right. <laughs> well, I just want to say, I feel, <laughs> yeah, bad. Right. I feel bad for Chris Cuomo. And that's it. Chris I'm not going to say anymore. He's yeah. apparently, and I don't know him, he's apparently fairly creepy. He could be fairly creepy, but the fact I'm that not saying he should be this should happen to him. Okay, but... we're talking we're talking television now, folks. We can do that. Look how <laughs> wide my eyes open now. Yeah, so, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um uh, yeah, it, 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 you know, it, it was brother's stuff. It had nothing to do with what he did on the air at CNN. Now it's supposedly he was also like being inappropriate towards women at one woman. One woman. One woman? Yeah. Yeah, one woman. Remember and I how told stupid. You, all those ones who came out of the woodwork about women. Andrew Cuomo, yeah. who the minute the election was over, forgot about it. Mandy? I was just saying, how stupid can you be with today's environment to even hit even, it? Yeah, yeah. You just, you keep your hands to yourself and you don't make any and comment. Go hire a hooker. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> I mean, you good. don't. But then again, okay, look, I got to be honest about it. When I was, a, when I was younger, uh, where did we meet people that we went out with? At bars. At work. At work. work. At work. <laughs> it's a primary place that people meet. You know, how many people in businesses that you've been part of fell in love with each other at work and got married and so on? I mean, it's, it's so what do you do now? You just don't hit on anybody at work? You don't say, would you like to go out for some drinks later? Is that wrong you well, be first sure. first you file with hr you get permission yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. And, and i'm not going to bring up her name your publisher friend who slept with a very powerful man because she liked powerful men judith regan i've talked about okay. her any number of times <laughs> and no she published <laughs> under the bus <laughs> isn't it isn't it isn't you know, it she went out with the biggest slug in new york city bernie carrick Bernard Carrick and I said to her once we were walk, I remember we were walking down the street back to her apartment and I said listen I gotta ask you something I said <laughs> Bernard Carrick and she <laughs> said blame me she says I just somehow am attracted to powerful men I mean have you seen Bernard Carrick he looks like a little slug he, he's a troll I mean he's something Not that like sits he's under a, a guy he's, something that sits under a bridge waiting for billy goats to show up <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, he also spent time I mean, in prison i mean is it forbidden in the workplace if you are equals like i know teachers when i was teaching who had relations who dated other teachers within the same school and ended up getting married and that's fine but if it's an administrator and a young intern or something that's different because then there's a power in most diet. in most companies it's it's the supervisory role right it's so if, if you're diet. if you've got someone who works under you yeah who wants to get under you, you get in trouble. Yeah, so su supervisors <laughs> never get laid is what you're saying. Right, right. right. Well, they, they shouldn't. But they I mean, my, 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 but my question is, okay, so you're at work. You work, you work at CNN, okay? And you meet up, meet this woman and she is attracted to you and you're attracted to her. What do you do? You know, how do you handle it's, this? If it's all consensual. Yeah, le legitimately, you actually do have to go to HR and say, yeah. you, you can say to her, I'd be interested in having going out on a date. And then you go and you file the paperwork with the company that you don't hold the company Jeez, liable. Oh and then you can go out. It's that bad. It's, it's that bad. A I can company, though. No, even in small companies, there, there, there's rules in the employee manuals to tell you how to how to proceed. 
But if you're in a, in a supervisory position or, or you're equals, the company will try to split you into different departments so that you're not, mm-hmm. not doing that. Yep. It's ridiculous. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, but it's, it's I, gotten to the point, you know, in, 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 in my work, I won't, I won't close the door to my office. If there's a female in the office, no matter who she is, it's always mm-hmm. open or I have someone else in there. Wow. I never want to be accused. I would n- I'd never do anything, but I'd never want to be accused of anything. We were told in my final years not to ever be alone with someone with the door yeah. closed. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been told I, not to be alone with Marjorie. You're, you're so- <laughs> and that came from that came from Marjorie, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Years ago, when I was in grad school and worked in a psychiatric hospital as an intern or a, an orderly, basically, mm-hmm. I had to go to HR once because someone had accused me of doing something that absolutely didn't happen. And of course, how do you prove the negative? And it turned out that there was a position that opened that this person wanted and thought that I was the shoe in for it. I wasn't looking to stay. I was finishing my grad school and going on to do something else. But she made an accusation, made an accusation because she thought that if I was out of the way, she could get the job. And she got found out later. In my entire business life, I can only think of one affair that I had with anybody who worked with me. Uh, Otherwise, I tried to avoid that. Because, you know, once it's over, you're still going to work every day, and there they. But that's are. why I never got yeah. married because I worked in Letterman for thirty-five years, and if it worked out, great. But when you go out with someone and now you broke up, it ain't comfortable. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's why. So you shouldn't be friends with your next door neighbor. Make sure they're two, three houses down. That's, shit, that's why shit goes never, south. That's why <laughs> you, you got to look at them every day. That's why I never had sex with Doctor Joyce Brothers. Uh, <laughs> I you, you should have. It was amazing. <laughs> but, she was no, but she was she was no dr ruth but <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh. but uh, yeah that's right you, you did actually date her didn't you no i didn't date her oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you, were you well, i worked with her i worked with her. Oh. uh and did you meet marjorie uh, where'd i meet marjorie mm-hmm. tell me day day what did he date JD. On your on your part, yeah, really. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Who was it? I was going to make a joke, but I can't remember the name of that and woman. She was, it, was it was it was one of these kinds of situations where there was a picture of her on J date, and we went to have our first date. I didn't notice which one was her because the picture didn't look anything like her. <laughs> J date. Don't we now? Don't think about. You're talking don't, about our don't, first don't, Hey, listen, we shouldn't have mentioned it because J-Day pays us every year not to admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Jewish dating. Jewish dating. Jewish, Jewish dating. tender. Oh, it's like Max. <laughs> like Max. Or whatever. It's a, it's, a, it's a very big one, actually, because a lot of you don't have to be Jewish to be You don't have to it. be Jewish. You, know. you just have to have a Jew fetish. A lot of Jewish men that love black women. Right. What Wasn't we, that the Levi's rye bread tagline? You don't have to be yeah, Jewish. You have to be Jewish <laughs> to love Levi's. What, were, what yeah. were you saying, Mandy? I said, so if I wanted to meet like a Jewish doctor, a nice Jewish yeah. doctor, go on JD. JD. Go to JD. JD. Yeah. But you're yeah. down in Georgia. I think the only legal site is Farmers Only, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, I, you know, it was, I I did about three of them. Maybe I did match.com. That didn't do anything for me. Uh, And I, huh? Ashley Madison. Was that one of them? No. no. (laughs) I I met one really lunatic on, I think it was J-Date. It was J-Date. Yeah. You remember I called, I called you. I called you after the date. Like scared to death. Because you jumped out of the cab. I forget exactly what she, yeah, what she I, said to you. We got in a car a cab, and she was blaming me because she got stuck in traffic coming into the city, and she was blaming me for the traffic. Wow. <laughs> and she was yelling and screaming at me. And, you know, bah, 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 bah. the first date was wonderful, by the way, real horny and all that. We didn't have sex, but it was, you know, one of those dates where you start kissing and going, hey, this is going to be great. So I'm waiting for the second date and she's like this and we're in the cabin. Finally, I said, life's too short. Goodbye. And I got up and walked out of the cab. <laughs> right, you called me right afterwards, quote, spooked. 
by this. It's spooked by her. Literally yeah. spooked. You know, I, I lucky I didn't have a rabbit. She probably would have boiled it right now. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, uh, you know, so uh, yeah, J date. That, that's the, that's where we met. And then we uh, quit it shortly thereafter because, or how long he did you stay? Didn't need it anymore. On? How long did you stay on it, Marjorie? Well, she's still on. She's still on. <laughs> I can't quit those. You still have a profile of. It's like Medicare Advantage. You can't get off of it. Just, when, way, I, just when I think, just when I think I'm out, they drag me back. <laughs> Once in a while, I get this thing from Match.com that says, "So and so, seventy-two years looked at your profile from." Uh, like, 20 yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah. wow. Looked at your file, uh, your, your profile oh, yeah. and screamed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, 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 the, the dating services, I, I didn't do them until I came to New York, back to New York the second time, because really, how do you meet people anymore? Well, you had uh, listeners back in San Francisco. Well, in San Francisco, I had groupies. What do you mean? <laughs> you know. Do you remember, Alex, back in the 80s, they had those professional dating services where you'd fill out profiles and people would pay thousands of dollars to get matched up. Yeah. Well, and then later it was revealed that all, none of the women paid. They got for free and the men all paid because they were trying to find. Sure. And then they came out with video dating where you'd, you'd have to pay to have a videotape made where you'd make a complete total ass of yourself in front of the camera. I had friends who did it. So like, you know, trying to be Mr. Mr. You know what in front of the camera so women would want to date you. No, boy. they were. There was a whole, a whole like an under, an even underground exposed industry. And there was this thing where you go out for like spend fifteen minutes at a time. Yeah. Speed dating. Speed dating. Mandy, yeah. Mandy, did you ever try dating service? No, I'm on. I'm on the online. I'm oh, really? on Bumble, Hinge, Match. Hey, Match anybody, anybody that's listening, call her up. She's she'll be fine. You should call her. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna yeah, we're gonna make an episode of this podcast to get okay. win a date with Mandy. Right? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we'll, we'll interview. Mandy we'll we'll out. find we'll, we'll be the ones yeah. who decide who you get to go out with. We'll get you good. Absolutely. We'll we'll give be you the top. So wait a minute. So you got what? You got three of them. You you subscribe to? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money every month. No, I don't pay. I don't pay. Bumble, you don't even pay. You just that's that's one where um, you don't have to. And Matchy, oh. I mean, I did pay for a while, but I dropped it. Yeah. yeah yeah and um hinge you don't have to pay either so i mean you can you can do premiums you know pay oh i see you get there's that free subscription and then you get more from yeah the, yeah like you get and the good hinge, look, you get the good to... looking guys for more money <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you pay 50 bucks a month you get the doctors right. <laughs> oh, oh boy God, it's not really medic doesn't medicare cover that <laughs> Only on the seventh of December. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Only on the video. Yeah, listen, uh, it's it's time time to go because uh, yeah, it's, it's time oh. just flies by, and I really I enjoy this. This is so much fun with you people. Uh, and Steve Bender, uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Will you post yeah. something on the eighth? Just for Not next week. Right. Yeah, post something on my Facebook page on the. Alex, <laughs> next week. Not we next know week, you. The, the, we know you're still on. The twenty sixth. Alex. Steve said not next week. Right. We said the 26th. No, no, no. I'm saying post something. Well, post to make you so, you know. I'm well, I know that here. you're still yeah, alive so after alive. December. <laughs> after the 7th. The 9th. The 9th. Uh, let me see. Scott Boddicker. Thank you. Charlie Wallace. Len LaFrisco. Rick Sheckman. Andrew Deutsch. Mandy O'Brien. And by the way, Marjorie Miller. And by the way, to close us off, Here's Edward Berger. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Edward. Thanks to okay. all of you. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Good uh, time. Good uh, time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.